Welcome to the Dealing with Goliath podcast. The mission of Dealing with Goliath is to sharpen the psychological edge of negotiation, ethical influencing, and high-impact conversations for business leaders who want to be more effective under pressure, uncover hidden value, and build greater connection, all while increasing profitability. This is the short-form Espresso Shot of Insight podcast interview to boost business performance using our five questions in around about 15 to 20 minutes format. My guest today is Sasha Garcia. Sasha is the founder of the CEO University. She's a board advisor and investor. She's over 12 years of entrepreneur experience in the tech industry, including in board advisor and mentoring roles, which led her to found the CEO University which is the first business school that ru- that's run by tech founders where she helps entrepreneurs start, scale, and sell their businesses. Excellent stuff. So, Sasha, welcome to the show. Welcome. Hi. Thank you for having me. It's great to have you on. So let's dive straight in. So who would be your ideal client and what's the biggest challenge they face? Mm-hmm. So our ideal clients are people who want to create a product or service kind of business in tech. And they're usually starting with zero uh, annual revenue and scaling up to 10 million. So within that range, those are our ideal clients. Their biggest problem is usually uh, getting into the lag cycle by fear so their biggest problem is fear and lack of motivation because it does take guts and balls to scale your business to start your business and to sell your business but uh yeah they they often struggle with that okay very interesting so what are the common mistakes people make when trying to solve that problem? So this is usually, you know, if people are listening and they're wondering, oh, maybe am I in this bucket? <laughs> is this for me? So what are some of those common mistakes they might realize they're doing? Uh, there is one and only mistake that I see here is that they take too long to fire, to hire people or to invest. They make too long to make very risky decisions. So, for example, yesterday I was talking to one entrepreneur and we were saying that she should start uh, with a webinar. And to do that, she would need to invest 3,000 euros into uh, into the paid traffic. And she got scared by it. It's like, you know, if people take too long to invest or to hire a team or to fire a team, they are kind of slowing themselves down and losing the motivation and getting scared into the scare cycle. And that's the problem that prevents them from scaling fast. And they do need to scale fast in order to keep up winning, to keep up the winning cycle, to keep up moving and moving forward. That sounds fascinating. So it sounds like you're very much a believer in gaining that momentum, that momentum builds momentum, so to speak. Exactly. It's a vicious cycle. You you have to make hard choices, but you have to make them on time. It's better to make the choice and later to understand that it was the wrong choice or the wrong decision than not to make it. If you're not making the hard decisions in your life, then you're really lagging behind. Right. So sort of a a good decision today is better than a perfect decision tomorrow. eh? Exactly. Uh, Exactly. In the CEO University, we are all about decisions and we're about making them fast because you don't know if it's going to work out well for you or not. But if you don't take them, you don't have a chance. And it sounds like, and I love that, that it's better to make the decision, find out it wasn't the right one, but that's more data. That's more information. Exactly. So even if it doesn't work, work, you still have learned something and then can pivot better. Exactly. We call this uh, data set actually fuck ups. So the more (laughs) fuck ups you make along the way, the bigger the data set you have and the stronger your analytical skills become. You know, okay, we did those 10 things wrong. We have the hope that the 11th one will work out. But we just take them with a grain of salt and we take them as a necessity for an entrepreneur. You just need to have as many data points, aka fuck ups, as possible, as fast as possible, so that you can pivot your product, your service, your offer. And you can only do that if you put it on the market. If you don't put it on the market, if you don't make it public, you can you don't stand a chance. 
Exactly. You sound like my dad. My dad is always, <laughs> is it on the shelf? Is it on the shelf? He is this phrase, is it on the <laughs> shelf to sell? You know, because you can yeah. be working on things all the time, but if it's not on the shelf, virtually exactly. or physically speaking, then you're not in that learning cycle, are you? Yeah. So yeah, exactly. You weren't expecting me to compare you to my 70 year old <laughs> dad. But anyway, he's a wise man. So I, yeah. Yeah, he would appreciate that. So so what what is one valuable free action that the audience mm-hmm. can implement that'll help? So it mightn't solve it, but it'll get them pointing in the right direction. Exactly. Well, I actually have two exercises for you. The first one is, um, I call it you need to gain your power back. You need to gain your confidence. And to do that, I suggest that they write down seven wins in their life and analyze it. Yeah. So to make decisions, you need to be in that momentum state of mind where you are confident enough to take new hard decisions. And to do that, you need at first to build confidence. And to build confidence, you need to make your brain believe that the things, the decisions you took before were actually not so bad. So to do that, you need to write them down and to say, okay, I actually never screwed up myself in my life. Uh, Every decision I took led me to a better level of my life. And you analyze that, you gain your confidence. And the next exercise, the second one is you could write down your current struggles or things that you know you're procrastinating on. And then understand that out of those 10 things where you're procrastinating, three of the things are probably inevitable. And in our book, in my book, we call it the principle of inevitability. There are some things that will happen in your life for sure. You know, like me writing a book, I was procrastinating on that for five years, but I know that inevitably, I knew a long time, that inevitably I'll be writing books and I'll be presenting my thoughts to the public. So it doesn't make sense to procrastinate on them because it will happen anyway. It's, you have to, you have to face them. So <laughs> first, we the build up the power, then uh, we make the hard decisions and we just start acting on them. So the second part of the exercise is just mm, uh, number down 10 things where you're lagging behind and take the actions on three of them and just uh, prioritize the three of them, which will happen in anyhow in your life and just go ahead and start doing them. Even if it's just buying the tennis racket to start playing tennis, just buy the racket. (laughs) I love that. I love that approach. I love it because I created a similar exercise years ago for my clients and coaching of the first one which I called the case files because it was like a lawyer building a case yeah, exactly. it's based on facts, on evidence. So even when your negative mind is going, oh, you can't, oh, it's based on facts. It's harder to argue yeah. with. So I love that because it's also it's spinning because we human brain tends to aggregate to the negative. We highlight the yeah. negative from threat and all that sort of stuff. And we lower the little victories, as you say. Exactly. So it's important to rebalance with with facts and information. So you're building mm-hmm. on that bedrock. I love it. Exactly. It's fantastic. Exactly. But the second part is fantastic where, you know, 10 <laughs> things, because you can also then, of course, say, well, the three things you pick are what are the ones that neutralize or make all the other ones much easier. Yeah. There's usually yes. three that will outweigh the others, right? Exactly. So. For for some people is to start selling. For some people is to quit their job. For some people mm-hmm. is to become public. And um, that one thing could actually eliminate five more, right? So exactly. those are those are the things that we should tackle, the ones that are that look the hardest, but you know that it's inevitable. You know, you will have to do it at some point in your life. So (laughs) because the earlier you start doing those inevitable things, actually, the earlier you'll be able to get the data points, the fuck up list, the data set. (laughs) And the better, uh, the bigger the data set, the smarter your next decisions are. So it's it's very simple to me. Fabulous. Fabulous. It makes perfect sense. And mm-hmm. it, it, it all it all pulls together. Um, so what is one valuable free resource that you could direct people to that will help them with this? Mm-hmm. Uh, I was thinking about it, but actually, I think that meditation, any meditation open on any of the uh, platforms, because um, to me, meditation is something where we can quiet down. Uh, we got into a different state of mind and we connect to ourselves. And when we're connected to ourselves, 
uh, we are much more empowered and we have mm, less fears. And that's the right state in which you can make faster decisions and move faster. So to me, it's actually about always listening to yourself because your true self knows which of the things are inevitable and you just have to start doing them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All the other uh, scary things are the ones that you hear from your inner critics, um, people from your life, etc., etc. But if you're really connected to yourself and if you start meditating like me every day, you connect to yourself every day, it's impossible to drag you out of your focus and of your uh, power state, I would say. So, yeah, that's uh, the only one happened that uh, habit that changed my life a lot. Um, another resource or book I would suggest uh, people read, it's, it's not free, but some of the pages probably are, sure. uh, but it's very, very affordable, is a um, book uh, by Byron Katie. Uh, it's mm-hmm. called Loving What Is, and the framework she goes around is called The Work. It's very simple, very efficient, but the tagline that I would say is that if you want to be able um, to disconnect yourself from your thoughts and analyze your thoughts as just a scientist making a research that's the framework to go to for me it's been very powerful it's something like self-coaching and uh it helps me a lot outstanding that's i wasn't expecting that because that that's fantastic and i completely agree sasha and just for every anyone listening you know the amount of research on meditation making the meditator oh, very quickly you don't need even mm-hmm. that many uh, uh, that much practice at it it starts to get benefits is you know it lowers reaction it lowers mm-hmm. negative thinking it lowers you know all of these little yes. traps as you said from the inner voice mm-hmm. uh, that it's all been documented from thousands of studies so it really is and and i love what you're saying there about you know what uh, love what is uh i just yeah. did a coaching course recently um and that was sounds similar, and it uh, was amazingly freeing. There's a lot less, as they call it, cognitive tension. load when you tension. Yeah. And what about this? What about the, and it just dissolves away to a lovely clarity. Yeah. And so, yeah. so I yeah, clarity is that. what we all need. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Particularly when you're running these things where there's a lot of uncertainty about yourself, about the market, about what what people exactly. will buy, what they want. I all mean, those sort of things yeah starting your business running your business scaling your business it requires a lot of being friends uh with the unknown and you can only be friends with the unknown if you if you know yourself if you connect to yourself if you feel calm and confident and clear about yourself and the world and the things that happen in your life if you can um live through your emotions without going nuts because <laughs> I mean, mm, <laughs> being an entrepreneur is a is a big load of responsibility, right? Because we are supposed to pay the salaries, we're supposed to predict, we are supposed to deliver results to our clients, and uh, to grow and scale our business uh, so that it's attractive for the investments or uh, for the buyers of the business. And that is a lot of tension. It is mm, definitely, and and I love that you said that. I mean, when I was researching my course and a lot of business owners the thing that came up which i found really humanely surprising Mm -hmm. was the two greatest fears particularly with creative entrepreneurs but entrepreneurs are entrepreneurs number one was falling into mediocre work yeah And and number two was having to fire good people because i didn't make enough money last month exactly Exactly. So amazing stuff. Amazing stuff. So Sasha, what was the one question I should have asked you? I think the question would be what enables or kicks off the growth cycle in any kind of person and in any kind of uh, uh, business, you would say, or professional life. And to me, that's a first uh, thing. First is um, responsibility. 
So when you take on a new level of responsibility, like when you start a family or when you buy a house, you buy a car, you buy things and you feel you're growing the things that you own and the things you have to feed to take care of, they just <laughs> each bite of your little piece of your little piece of your energy and your focus. And you have to start making the money to kind of support all those things that you're responsible for, for your family, for your children, etc. So the first thing that kicks off the growth cycle for any personality to me is to take on more responsibility. And the next one is if you want to create a new product or a new source of income or a new business is to connect to your true self and to do something that you really enjoy in your deep, deep hearts, not something that other people say is profitable or what everybody else is doing, but you should choose only the things that you would be excited to do and to run the business for the next 10, 20 years. So it should be something that you will never get bored of. So that's why it's very important to me to start business that are built on your authenticity, right? Mm. Um, the third thing, what I usually do when I start a product, a course or a community, or I write a book, I do massive action. It's like, okay, we want to do this. And I work like crazy for a very uh, short period of time, but I, I put massive action and massive effort. And when I'm done, when I did my best that is currently available to me, to my team, to my level of budget, to my level of effort, to my level of network. When I've done my best, I let go uh, completely and I check out and I see how my ma market accepts it. If they accept it or not, if they accepted it well, great, we have profit. If they didn't, we have a data point and we are able to make another decision better. And those cycles that I'm saying, we usually run it right now with my team during the three, four weeks. So tomorrow uh, I'm going on vacation because it's time to let go. Uh, I'm having a short break to recharge, to uh, clear my mind completely so that when I'm back, I can start a new growth cycle. And yeah, that's, that's the way it runs. And that's, mm, I think is a very important thing to realize uh, this cycle uh, because then you kind of have an opportunity to lower your stress. You know what mm. happened now, you know, what is the next step to take? The next is massive action. Okay, you're ready to work your ass off. Next, okay, relax, let go, let's see how market takes it. Okay, that's it. So you kind of jump the stairs, uh, you take on more responsibility, you come up with authentic idea, massive action, and you let go of control because we're not gods. <laughs> We're trying to uh, to make a dent in the world, but only the market decides if that's something they want and they will pay for it, if that's something that brings value to them or not. So when you know the cycle, I think it's very, um, it brings you inner peace. Absolutely. And there's a lot of wisdom there in the sense that you're not hard charging all the time which yeah. leads to burnout, you know, yeah. but you're going, we're going to, we're going to focus in this window and blast at it. And mm. it makes so much sense. It yeah. makes so much sense. And okay. I love the, I love your first principle as well. It kind of reminds me what somebody said, you, you know, the, the Spider-Man saying, you know, with great power comes great responsibility. And they said it the other way around. If you take great responsibility, you get great You power. have to grow. Yeah, you have you to. to. You're grow. like, Okay, I really have to make money for this because I already took on this responsibility. And exactly. yeah, it's in the beginning, it's kind of a jump of faith. Like, can I or can I not? Like when you're hiring your first team member, for example, mm. can I afford or not? But you have to make the money if you hire them. So you have the money for the first couple of months and then each month you have to grow so that you have uh, the salaries lined up and you just don't have another choice. So that's it. And that's how you grow. That's how you grow. <laughs> Sasha, thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. Where can people find you? Where can Where can they reach out to you? Um, definitely on LinkedIn, just Sasha Garcia and uh, the CEO dot world. That's our main resource. And uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions and uh, chat a little bit. Please sh share your feedback. 
uh, share your thoughts. Uh, uh, what do you think about this chat? And thank you so much, Al, for, for having me on the show. Thank you, Froats. Thank you so much. Great to have you. Bye-bye. Thank bye. you. Bye-bye.